Yo, welcome back everyone. This is Stu42 with another Minecraft video. Today I'm going to get back to the how-to kind of series that I originally started recording way back at the, uh, the start of my first series. Uh, I've figured a few things out in my new little base here. Um, I've got a, it's some auto crafting setup that I wouldn't mind showing you. Um, yeah, so it's going to be just a quick episode on automating the inscribers. So we've got my i'm just gonna jump into it right into it right by the way um we've got our original our original setup here where we've got um you know the me terminal with all my all my junk in there um i've made these holes just because i got sick of going to the elevator in the corner uh down here we do have one of these a 4k crafting storage now this is just a single uh, thing that you can craft at once. Uh, you can add co-processors to it and a few other things. Uh, where are they? I think, yeah, co-processing units are the purple ones. So um, everything starts with these crafting units, which are uh, reasonably expensive. Not not really, I guess. Um, three processors and then make that. And then from there, you make all of these other ones. So um, the co-processor unit, the monitor, which I may end up making from the top, and then the different sizes of things. Um, to look after your crafting. So I've only got the one the one thing, which means I can only craft one thing at once, but um, what we'll do first is I'll go over the prerequisites that we need to make. So these are the, the four main inscribers, and as you can see, you can see the plates in there. So it's the logic press, this one is the calculation press, the engineering press, and then the one right at the very top is the silicon press. Uh, I've got these uh, interfaces up the up the left hand side here uh, and on them I have a pattern which basically says uh, one gold you put one gold ingot in and it makes the circuit board so inputting from the side just puts the, the central piece in I, I leave the plates in here these inscribers aren't very expensive I've seen other people with setups where you're swapping the plates in and out and all that sort of stuff and I just thought you know what I'm just gonna I'm just going to make it like this instead. Uh, using quite a few channels here as well. You can see down there, six of eight channels. Uh, down the bottom, I've made, you can see the tooltip, 11 of 32 channels. So I've had to use some of the, the dense cable down the bottom. Uh, and then similar thing all the way up. Just, you know, one diamond makes one printed engineering circuit. Uh, one pure Certus Quartz Crystal makes one calculation circuit. And that's a pretty easy thing to do. And then from over here if I use this I can scroll down to these so I've already got a printed engineering circuit but I could make a logic circuit or uh, a printed silicon uh, I've got plenty of silicon so what I might do is I'll make say 10 of those now when you go next it tells you how many bytes it's going to use this is a very simple crafting recipe just making one thing out of one thing 10 times over 54 bytes uh, there's only one crafting CPU so you know we can only choose between CPU 0 or Automatic, so automatic is the one we want to use, and then you just click start, uh, and away it goes. So now, if we look over here, you can see up there. I don't know if you can see it. Let's. Uh, I've got some stone. Let's go up here, so you can see the bit of silicon in there, and that'll be like if I right-click on it. There we go. It's making making another one, stamping them out. The import bus is importing them back in. So while those are going, I uh, the other thing I've managed to automate is the, the charger. Now, the charger's on the bottom because it needs to be powered from either the bottom or the top. So uh, these inscribers actually have a single, uh, I'm not sure you can see through there, but there is a, just a, a glass cable running up the back to power all of these. Uh, but this one here needs to be powered from the bottom, so it's on the bottom. Similar thing. Standard uh, Certus Quartz uh, creates one charge Certus Quartz. The only difference with this one is the import bus. Um, oh, I must have cleared it. The import bus should be set for charged Certus, um, which means it'll only import the, the Quartz Crystal once it's finished, finished charging. Um, I'll actually have to fix that up a bit later. Um, so the next tricky bit though, the bit that I've seen a few different ways of people automating is the actual uh, processes themselves. Now, this is where I've got this set up. Now, we've got a completely empty inscri inscriber. It's, uh, it's powered off the back. Uh, we have this import bus off the side and we have three export buses. 
So, and it's running off its own separate AE system. It is it is not connected to the other AE system at all. It is just another little sub network, really. Uh, we need to have this ME chest, which has, if we click on the side of it, just a 1K storage. It's just enough to hold, you know, whatever it's crafting at the time. Uh, export bus at the top basically says, always put printed silicon in the top. This one's always putting redstone in the side. This bottom one we've added this card to, so I've added the capacity card in so that I can actually push in all three of these sorts of printed boards. And then if we jump up and over here, there's a sneaky little export bus here, and it also has a capacity card set to export the finished processes. So how does this work? In these two interfaces, so this interface here is on our original network and has these patterns. So the pattern for each of the processes, and then it tells it what it needs to make. So say we want to make a logic processor and it says, look, we need a printed logic circuit, uh, one printed silicon and one redstone. It'll, because we've set the arrow this way, it'll throw those ingredients straight into this interface. Now this interface isn't doing anything other than acting as an inventory. Uh, it is connected straight into the sub network, which means that anything inside there straight away just gets sucked away into, into this ME chest. But because these export buses are set to export that stuff straight away, when this pumps through the three ingredients, this thing just exports them straight into here. And then this import bus collects the finished product, which goes very briefly to here. And then this export bus exports it from the sub network back into the interface on our original network, which then just puts the item back into our original storage. So let's give it a go. So what have we got? So if I take a logic processor out, just so that I can click the craft. Now, what this is gonna do is we haven't got any of these logic circuit boards, so we should click that. We want one of them. Now you can see that it's gonna take a bit more memory. Uh, we have to make both this and this, so it's gonna make one of these out of the gold and then pump all three things through. So let's click start. Run back over to here. Now you can see the gold. The gold bar is in there ready to be pressed for the, the logic board. There we go, stamped away, slight graphics bug there. And now through here, you can see that that pattern has exported into the system. This system has exported all three materials that it needs into this inscriber. And then this should stamp these any second. There we go, stamp, import bus, grabs it back out, puts it straight into this chest, very briefly there, as you can see. And then the export bus, there it goes. There we go, disappears. And then the export bus over here has thrown it straight back into the original system. Which means when I go back over here and check the original system, there we go, we have our new logic processor that we've told it to make. So this works pretty well for all three of these things. Uh, I've seen people doing it with other mods as well. I sort of wanted to do a pure applied energistics way of approaching this. Uh, the only way that I could sort of come up with was the sub-network uh, kind of way. Um, it seems to work pretty well. It's it's pretty slow though. So what I might do at, in a future, uh, in future is grab one of these, this acceleration card, which is pretty simple. Um, just a pure flux crystal with some an advanced card. The advanced cards are a bit expensive on diamonds, but you get two of them. So you know I might add them. The inscribers are sort of the slow bit of the equation. So I might add. Um, add the speed to there and later on maybe if I get really like I'm feeling really rich with uh, resources and diamonds and things I may speed up these import buses and export buses as well because as you saw before we watched this processor sitting here for quite a while before it got taken away and put back in the original network um, yeah so that's that's pretty much it for uh, for this episode I just wanted to be a sort of quick how-to on getting those things uh, those things automated um, Hopefully you guys can uh, either come up with a similar way or if there's other ways in this Direwolf 20 pack that you got, uh, that you guys know of doing it um, that aren't too complicated, please by all means uh, let me know. Um, but this seems to, seems to work pretty well for me so far. Uh, the one thing I haven't managed to figure out yet is how to actually grow the crystals in the water 
automatically. Uh, I know you can set timers and things like that, but I, I didn't really want to do it with timers, uh, so I'm struggling to think of a way to do that in a in a neat kind of way. Um, I'm sure I'll think of something at some point. Uh, so anyway, that's all for me for this episode. Uh, I hope it has uh, taught you something with uh, how to do this automated inscriber stuff. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.